turned 60, and I don't give a shit. <laughs> I heard Deborah Lee, CEO of Black Entertainment Television, say that a year ago at the Women's Leadership Forum in DC. And that really spoke to me because I was about to enter my 60th year. And what did that mean to me? What it meant to me is that I'd always been a good girl, I'd been a good student, I'd been a good daughter, and I need to start caring less about being good, and I needed to be bold. Because when you're concerned about being good, you're very constrained, and you can't do the things that you might want to do because you're always on the path. And that path, you can't find those really interesting detours. And like many of you, I've been throwing curveballs in my life. And four, five years ago, I was laid off from Bank of America, where I'd worked for 12 years. I'd spent my career as a financial executive, high performer, and I had determined that I was going to retire from corporate life on my timeline. However, that didn't work out. I remember the day well. It was April 15, 2011, tax day. Uh, I had sent, er, sent in my taxes and a rather large IRS check to the IRS. And I was settling in for my 9 o'clock weekly call with my boss. I was actually at home. Um, with my cup of tea, and I heard her on the, the first thing that she asked me was, are you, are you at home? Well, that's really odd, because she'd never asked me that before, and she knew that I typically work from home on Fridays. So, something, I was noticing the change in the tone of her voice. My antenna were twitching. Something was up but I never suspected that I'd be laid off. She told me in a few sentences, and I was stunned. It was like having an out-of-body experience, but not a good one. <laughs> For I had worked at the bank, and I thought, again, I was going to retire on my own timetable. And it turned out that that wasn't going to be the case. I had, uh, I'm a single mother, I have two teenage daughters, and a rather large mortgage. I was, didn't quite know what I was going to do, but I realized that I had to do something. And I looked at the first thing, offers were coming in from other financial institutions. And it just didn't seem quite right. Although I had been comfortable at the bank, and I was well paid, I had really fascinating clients. It just wasn't enough for me. I had been unshackled. By being laid off, I was unshackled. I felt unshackled. And that I didn't have to go back to doing what I felt comfortable doing. And it was through that that I realized that I needed to be bold and bolder. So what does bold mean to me? Let me introduce you to Rear Admiral Grace Hopper. She was the first female coder was promoted to the level of Rear Admiral in the US Navy. She started as a WAC in World War II. She was a computer scientist, and she's actually credited with popularizing the term debugging. Because as the story goes, she actually fixed a computer glitch by taking a moth out of the computer. <laughs> and Google honored her with a Google Doodle here. And as you can see, and this was on the 107th anniversary of her birth two years ago, so she's soon coming up on 110th anniversary, the little moth is over there on the right-hand side. And yes, for those of you who are much younger, computers actually were the size of small cars back then. 
so she was, she actually, Grace was forced to retire, like all officers, from the Navy at age 60. But they kept asking her to come back. So she finally retired from the Navy at age 79. But she didn't quit. She went on to work for Digital Equipment Corporation until she died at the age of 85. Grace took risks. Grace was a pioneer in so many ways. And she broke some pretty serious glass ceilings. In fact, in the Navy, they're probably bulletproof. <laughs> and she broke them. She's bold. And that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be like Grace. But when I was laid off, I was concerned about loss of control, and I didn't know where I was headed. And with having a family, I needed to figure out where I needed to go. And so looking at uh, financial institutions and other things like that, they were traditional. I didn't want to go that route. So like many things in life, at least my life, and I'm sure many of yours, serendipity stepped in and led me on a new adventure. And that adventure was a new startup. A friend of mine introduced me to a friend of his whose wife had sadly passed away after having suffered from bipolar disorder. And we started a startup called Social Rhythm. It's a mobile health app company to help those with mental illness. And that's what I really spoke to me in wanting to do something for those that have less. And so with that, I um, worked very hard, and I became the CEO, the COO, the CFO, <laughs> head of sales, uh, VP of marketing, and the janitor. <laughs> That's what you do in startups, right? But the one thing I couldn't do, and I was so incredibly frustrated about, is I could not code. I couldn't code the app. And it, our, the app is our product. If we don't have a minimum viable product, you can't go out and raise more money. And we had already tapped out our friends and family. So it was actually when I was listening to Deborah Lee last year that I realized that our company was not going to make it, as 90% of startups don't. That was dawning on me, and I learned from her that I realized that I needed to be bolder. And in being bolder, that meant that I needed to do something different. And so, in January, I had to start, I regrouped. It was, again, and I heard on NPR, uh, I learned about Sabio, a software development boot camp. And I heard from Gregorio, the founder, that he was teaching women and minorities to become software developers. And I distinctly remember him saying, I can teach anyone to code who has the will. <laughs> anyone? Yes, that's me. Has the will? Those two daughters I mentioned? I wasn't about to have them see their mother finished with her career at age 60 because I had lost a job. So you bet I had the will. So in May, I started at Sabio. I was working 25 to 30 hours a week, learning online code, coding online, and going to class, evening classes, three nights a week. Now, I'm an early morning person. And to learn something really hard and new and complex from 7 to 10 at night was incredibly difficult, and I would literally come home with headaches. But I made it through. And then in August, we started a 12-week intensive project, working for a real client, working 60 to 70 hours a week. And those were sort of my regular hours 
when I was back in banking and traveling and things like that. So it wasn't that unusual. However, because I was learning new things, it was very challenging. And I was also working with my cohort, which 80% of which were aged 20 to 24. <laughs> and there's one guy there, he's, he was like 45. And then there's me in the back, there. <laughs> and they seemed to pick this up like sponges, very quickly. But for me, it was incredibly difficult. And, but what I did, and to be honest, I really felt dumb. But when I feel dumb, what I do is I study and work harder, evenings and weekends. And finally, I was able to catch on as to what I was uh, doing. And in fact, because the last three months was like a full immersion into a new language and new culture, I was living, breathing, and literally dreaming in code. I knew that I was catching on. It was like taking a foreign language. Many of you have taken foreign languages. And at first, it's sort of like the Tower of Babel, and you're not really catching on. Then all of a sudden, it becomes more intuitive. And then you start to dream in the language, and you know that you've got it. So when I started to dream in the language, I knew I had it. <laughs> Some of my dreams sort of look like this. Lots of code symbols, there's some words there you recognize, and it's about dark rooms. Coders, developers love to code in the dark. I don't understand, but they do. And as I have approached the end of the project, I felt an incredible amount of excitement as to what the possibilities were now that I had this new skill. And I haven't felt like this in so long. It's been decades. It was probably when I graduated from uh, graduate school and business school and went, traveled through Europe and got my very first job in Chicago that I felt really like the possibilities were endless. And I feel like that now. So what can I do? I'm thinking I can develop mobile apps. I can start a development boot camp. I can do, do a development shop. But all of it's going to have a purpose it's going to go back to the roots of trying to help others, most likely in social service agencies. So the possibilities are endless. And what I've learned is that I need to be bold, because if I don't do it now, when is it going to happen? I've got more yesterdays than there are tomorrows. And so I need to be able to look in the mirror and see that I can do this now. So here I go. <laughs> From good to bold, and I can code. Thank you.